So ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the main event of the evening. Alan Rice and his Tama Shanta. Thank you everyone. And, uh, you know, many of you I'm sure have heard this before, and I guess I'll be doing this the rest of my life now. <laughs> because I get asked every year, are you going to do that Tama Shanta again? For any of you out there who haven't heard it before, I'll give it a little introduction. If you go to uh, Alloway, Scotland today, and you cross the River Dune from Robert Burns' childhood home, you'll find an old ruin of a church called Alloway Kirk. Now, the old church looked pretty much the same way, maybe in a little better shape in Burns' day, but it was one of his favorite places on earth. And when he made the acquaintance of one Captain Francis Gross, who was traveling Scotland to make illustrations of old buildings for a book he was compiling, Burns entreated Captain Gross to include old Alloway Kirk in his book. Now, Captain Gross, being a quick thinker, saw the opportunity and agreed on the condition that Burns would write a ghost story to accompany his picture of Alloway Kirk. So in 1791, Tam O'Shanter was published in Captain Gross's book, Antiquities of Scotland, and it's been regarded as one of the finest narrative poems ever written to this day. And now, I'm sure that by now most of you know what a Cuddy Sark is, but for the few of you out there who don't, I better explain because it's an important bit of trivia to understand or to fully appreciate this story. A sark is a woman's dress worn as an undergarment, and cutting referred to anything cut too short. And uh, in this particular instance, uh, it's a short dress, but could also be considered uh, the old Scots version of naughty lingerie. So now, just relax, prepare yourself for a story about a man who has a little too much to drink, and then happens upon a beautiful woman dancing in her cutty sock. Tam O'Shanter by Robert Burns. <clears throat> when peddler fellows leave the street, and thirsty neighbors, neighbors meet, as market days are wearing late, and folk begin to take the gate, while we sit boozing at the nappy and getting drunk and very happy, we think not on the long Scots miles, the marshes, waters, slaps and styles that lie between us and our home, where sets our soaking sullen dame, gathering her brows like gathering storm, nursing her wrath to keep it warm. This truth found on his tam will shanter, as he from Arrow one night did canter. Ah, oh, Arrow, whom ne'er a town surpasses, for honest men and bonny lasses. Oh, Tam, had thou but been so wise as taken thy own wife Kate's advice, she told thee well thou were a waster, a blethering, blustering, drunken boaster, that from November till October each market day thou was not sober, that instead of grinding with the miller thou sat as long as thou had silver, that every nag was put a shoe on, the smith and thee got roaring drunk on, that at the Lord's house, even on Sunday, thou drank with Kirk and Jean till Monday. She prophesied that late or soon thou would be found deep drowned in dune, or catched by warlocks in a murk by Alloway's old haunted Kirk. Ah, gentle dames, it grieves me great to think how many counsels sweet, how many lengthened sage advices the husband from the wife despises. <laughs> but to our tale, one market night, Tam had got planted uncommonly right, fast by a fireplace blazing finely, with foaming ales that drank divinely, and at his elbow, Cobbler Johnny, his ancient, trusted, thirsty crony, Tam loved him like a very brother, they had been drunk for weeks together. <laughs> the night drove on with song and clatter, and I, the ale, was growing better. The landlady in town grew gracious, with favors secret, sweet, and precious. The cobbler told his queerest stories. The landlord's laugh was ready chorus. The storm without might roar and rustle. Town didn't mind the storm a whistle. Care mad to see a man so happy even drowned himself among the nappy. As bees flee home with loads of treasure, 
the minutes winged their way with pleasure. Kings may be blessed, but Tam was glorious over all the ills of life victorious. The pleasures are like poppy spread. You seize the flower, its bloom is shed. Or like the snow falls in the river, a moment white, then melts forever. Or like the borealis rays that flit before you can point their place. Or like the rainbow's lovely form, in vanishing amid the storm. No man can tether time nor tide. The hour approaches, time must ride. That hour of night's black arch, the keystone. That dreary hour he mounts his beast on, and such a night he takes the road in as never a poor sinner was abroad in. The wind blew as if it had blown its last. The rattling showers rose on the blast. The speedy gleams, the darkness swallowed loud, deep, and long the thunder bellows. Well, that night a child might understand the devil had business on his hand. Well mounted on his gray mare, Meg, a better never lifted leg, Tam raced on through mud and mire, despising wind and rain and fire, whilst holding fast his good blue bonnet, whilst crooning o'er some old Scott's sonnet, whilst glowering round with prudent cares, lest bogles catch him unawares. Alloway Kirk was drawing nigh, where ghosts and owls nightly cry. By this time he was crossed the ford, where in the snow the pender smothered, and past the birches and big stone, where drunken Charlie broke his neck bone, and through the thorn and by the cairn, where hunters found the murdered bairn, and by the thorn above the well, where Mongo's mother hanged himself. Before him doom pours all his floods, the doubling storm roars through the woods. Lightnings flash from pole to pole, near and more near the thunders roll. When glimmering through the groaning trees, Alloway Kirk seemed in a blaze. Through every gap light beams were glancing, and loud resounded mirth and dancing. Inspiring bold John Barleycorn, what dangers canst thou make us scorn? With ample ale we fear no evil. With good whiskey, we face the devil. The ale so swam in Tammy's noodle, fair play, he cared not devil's a doodle. But Maggie stood, right sore astonished, till by the heel and hand admonished, she ventured forward toward the light, and wow, Tam saw an incredible sight. Warlocks and witches in a dance. No cotillion brand new from France, but hornpipes, jigs, thraspies, and reels put life and metal in their heels. A window alcove in the east, there sat old Nick in shape of beast. A shaggy dog, black, grim, and large. To give them music was his charge. He screwed the pipes and made them squeal till roof and rafters all did peel. <laughs> Often stood round like open presses that showed the dead in their last dresses. And by some devilish magic sleight, each in his cold hand held a light by which heroic town was able to note upon the holy table a murderer's bones and gibbet irons, two span on we unchristened bands. A thief knew cut it from a rope, with his last gasp his mouth did gape. Five tomahawks with blood red rusted, five scimitars with murder crusted, a garter which a babe had strangled, a knife a father's throat had mangled, who his own son of life bereft, the gray hairs yet stuck to the shaft with more of horrible and awful which even to name would be unlawful. Three lawyers' tongues turned inside out, sewn with lies like beggar's cloth. Three priests' hearts, rotten, black as muck, lay stinking by in every nook. As Tommy glowered amazed and curious, the mirth and fun grew fast and furious. 
The piper loud and louder blew, the dancers quick and quicker flew. They reeled, they set, they crossed, they leaped, till every witch sweated in a wreath and cast her ragged clothes to the floor, and in her sock did dance on more. Now Tam, oh Tam, had these been queens all plump and strapping in their teens, their socks, instead of greasy flannel, been snow-white seventeen hundred linen, these breeches of mine, my only pair, that once were plush of good blue hair, I'd given them off my buttocks bare for a blink of those lassies, <laughs> bonny and fair. But withered dames, old and droll, ugly hags would wean a fool, leaping and flaming on a crooked stick, I wonder it did not turn thy stomach. But Tam knew what was what by golly. There was one wench, winsome and jolly, that night enlisted in the corps, and long after known on Carrick's shore, for many a beast to dead she shot, and perished many a bonny boat, and drank much both barley corn and beer, and kept the country side in fear. Her cutty sark of paisley behind, that while a lassie she had worn, in longitude though sorely scanty, it was her best and suited her vanity. Ah, little knew thy reverend granny that sark she bought for her wee nanny with two Scots pounds, twas all her riches, would ever grace the dance of witches. But here, my muse, her wing must bow, such flights are far beyond her power, to sing how nanny leaped and flung, a supple jade she was, and strong. Or how Tammy stood like one bewitched, he thought his very eyes enriched. Even Satan glowered and fidged full of fame, and jerked and blew with might and main, till first one caper, then another, Tam lost his reason altogether and roars out, Well done, Cuddy Sark! And in an instant all was dark, and scarcely had he Maggie rallied, when out the hellish legion sallied. As bees buzz out with angry wrath, when plundering herds assail their nest, as the wild hare sees her mortal foes, and pop, she starts before their nose. As eager runs the market crowd, when catch the thief resounds aloud, so Maggie runs, the witches follow, with many an eldritch screech and horror. Oh, Tam, oh, Tam, thou get thy farin, and hell they'll roast thee like a heron. And vain thy Kate awaits thy coming. Kate soon will be a woeful woman. Now do thy speedy utmost, Meg, and win the center of the bridge, for there at them thou thy tail may toss. A running stream they dare not cross. But ere the center she could make, there was no tail she had to shake. For Nanny, far before the rest, hard upon noble Maggie pressed, and flew at town with furious edel, but little was she Maggie's mettle, one spring brought off her master hail, but left behind her own gray tail. The witch had caught her by the rump and left poor Maggie scarce a stump. <laughs> now who this tale of truth shall read? Each man and mother's son take heed. Whene'er to drink you are inclined, or cutty socks run in your mind, think. Ye may buy joys that cost too dear. Remember Tam of Shamter's mare. I just might do it again next year. <laughs>